to webinar number 130 organized by the Andean Health Hippolyte Agreement. This cycle of webinars started on May of 2020. This year, we're celebrating our 50th anniversary of our institution, a very sensitive and significant We continue and interactively working with joint actions with the six member countries since 1971, Bolivia, Chile, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, and Venezuela, thus meeting the goals and objectives to strengthen the health of our people. As a reference in health, we highlight three important points. Vaccination against COVID-19 is safe and effective in protecting ourselves and others. The more people who are immunized, the less likely they are to become infected. Make sure you and your family receive the second, third, or fourth dose as appropriate. There no excuse for not complying with the COVID-19 vaccination schedule. The socioeconomic and environmental context in Latin America and the Caribbean is a scenario in which hunger, food insecurity, and malnutrition have increased. Policy, policy decisions are required to achieve sustainable, sufficient, inclusive, efficient agri-food systems that generate equal access to a healthy diet for all. Climate change threatens life, health, and well-being. However, we can contribute to its preservation from wherever we are generating social policies and a sustainable development model by joining an initiative in defense of the environment, buying local products and plant-based foods. We can use public transport, cycling or walking, as well as reducing consumption re by reusing, repairing and recycling. It is everyone's duty to restore the relationship with nature. It is necessary to recognize the ancestral knowledge of native peoples who have lived in balance with Mother Earth and practice good living. Today, Thursday, September 22, we start a webinar to discuss a topic of great importance for our region, publishing without dying in the attempt, the digital revolution and free access to information. We invite you to leave your name, organization, and country from which you are joining us through the comment box of the Facebook Live or YouTube Live chat. In the same space, you can leave your questions or send them via email to webinar or as consul at gmail.com. To access the certificate of attendance to this webinar, as usual, you must fill up a short survey and leave your data in the fixed link found in the Facebook Live and YouTube Live chats. The certificate will be sent to your email in the following days. To comment you the dynamic of this webinar, we will start with an institutional greeting, then the presentations from our speakers, and in this case, a presentation of our publications, the active polls, and the space for QA. To begin this important day, I give the floor to the Maria, Dr. Maria Carmen Calle, Executive Secretary of Oras Contu, who will give the welcome and institutional greeting. Go ahead, Dr. Calle. Thank you, Janet. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Publish without dying trying, the digital revolution and free access to information. Six to familiarize and interwine research with the process of translating each piece of data into a product that is tangible for verification, that helps and promotes education bringing knowledge closer to more people, and in turn, is useful for society. It is pertinent to remember that knowledge that is not published or is not accessible does not exist in social terms. 
we are betting on the democratization of knowledge. Since it starts, Horace Kohn, who with 50 years has gone through a long process of editing in its technical political document, most of which initially contained guidelines for joint work and major political commitments, but which were addressed exclusively to decision makers. Years went by and with them, new visionary executive secretaries who took these documents and began to build together with the Andean Health Ministries, large technical studies, which are now becoming accessible, also generating evidence, achieving the commitment of other institutions to contribute to more exhaustive analysis at the regional level. The use of technological tools has undoubtedly peaked during the pandemic. And Oras Konu was now stranger to it. Infodemia and misinformation threatened the health of millions of people. That is why we continue working and betting on continuous interlearning. One of our greatest achievements during the pandemic and that we continue to do like this training. Today, we would like to present to you part of our work together with the six countries. Our diagnosis, health situation analysis, systematization, reports, scientific articles, plans and policies, which have placed on a permanent agenda those issues that the countries jointly prioritize. The preparation of our documents not based on individual criteria, but rather on joint need. The strengthening of integration and problems that need to be addressed as a whole. To date, we have more than 200 index publications. It means we are present national, regional, South America, and world publications. In 2021, the Andean Integration System appointed us as a reference in Andean health. It is our responsibility informed with evidence. We have been doing based on regional studies and with the support and backing. Of Thank you very much who are two professors that are with us today, Ligia Sanchez and Estela Reder, for participating and giving their time for this webinar number 140, which is extremely important, the Andean Health Organization, Hipólito Unano Agreement. Thank you, Dr. Calle. After the greeting of our executive secretary, I introduce myself, I'm Janet Clavo, and I'm the communicator of communication of Oras Conju, and I am pleased to be in charge of the moderation of this webinar. On this occasion, as Dr. Calle mentioned, we will have professional researchers, Estela Rueder and Dr. Ligia Sanchez, who have extensive experience in the subject that brings us together. After this preamble, we will begin this event by presenting the publication of the Andean Health Organization, who's a reference for health in these recent years. For that, I will be accompanied by Magister Yadira Salas, who is the coordinator of the permanent education area of our institution. I will start with her presentation.
This is the content that I will share with you very quickly. We will talk. I know that our audience knows our institution. However, we always have new followers. So that is why we need to talk to them about the general data from our organization, the Nilo Reyana Documentary Center, a generation of publications with collaboration with other scientific journals, indexing and participation in LILAX and Virtual Health Library from PAHO. The Andean Health Organization in Polytunan Agreement was created on December 18, 1971, and attached to the Andean Integration System in 1998, made up of the Ministries of Health of Bolivia, Chile, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, and Venezuela, who continuously, since 1971, they've been working together. The ECOSEVE Executive Secretariat is located in Lima, Peru. Our secretary is Dr. Maria Carmen Cayenda Hayes, authority of Orias Consul of the, is the meeting of Ministries of Health of the Andean area called REMSA. I would like to tell you about the effort of Andean organization is made up by all the technical officials of the Ministry of Health of the six countries. We have 18 Andean committees, three subcommittees, eight working groups, one Andean working table, and an Andean table of health communicators, and is coordinated with the Technical Coordination Committee from the Ministry of Health of the six countries. There is where we see the importance of our publications these are not publications that have one single criterion, but are made with the joint effort of the six countries in each one of the areas mentioned in this slide. In this presentation, you can review in our web page once we finish this webinar. All the presentation will be posted there so you can see all the effort we've done in each one of these areas. These are the key moments. In 1971, the Polytunon Agreement is created in 1987 through a REMSA resolution we created the Daniel Orellana Documentation and Information Center. This is a physical space where we store research that was coming from the Andean region. In 2004, with the PAMAFRO project, we systematized the experience, initiating a process of collection of evidence that was quite interesting, that validated the actions and support of this project. In 2010, we started with digital publications, interactive CDs, as well as the use of other technological tools that allow us to work in a different manner in terms of documents. In 2020, new virtual technologies emerge, the social networks strengths, and we start with monthly publications, collaboration in scientific journals, indexing of documents, and webinars, which is something important that we're going to expand later. This is Dr. Daniel Orellana, a former executive secretary of the Andean Organ Health Organization from 1975-76, uh, Venezuelan physician. And in his honor, the, this document center received his name. Some of the first publications that we have collected most of them have not been digital, digitalized. Hopefully we'll do it soon with all the documents that we have in paper, which are a jewels of research. And I'm going to, and unfortunately because of lack of time, I cannot stop in each one of these recent publications. As I mentioned, we have Andean committees who work each one of these documents 
parte eh, importante. An important part, an important point to highlight in this document that we generate as our institutions. They have consensus with the six countries based on research performed with official data from the ministries of health. So this is a significant contribution to the region, to the world of drafting this type of documents. They are all accessible in our web page and are also indexed in the health virtual library. I'm going quickly so we can see our web page. We have systematization of PAMAFRO, of the PAMAFRO was our project of malaria, the borders health and the plan. We have memoirs of the fora and our institutional memory for our 50th anniversary. This health situation analysis that were prepared in the borders were used in the future to do by national joint projects. We also had topics with regards to disasters and intercultural health. Just to mention that our documents have a technical, political, and scientific Characteristic. So these plans are an umbrella for the work done for the countries. Internally, these documents serve countries and decision makers with regards to the regional situations. These are plans prepared, as I mentioned at the beginning, are done together between among the six countries. I'm going to stop here for the Andean policies topic that we've been doing for many years. These are framed documents, very important for our institution, but even more important for the countries at the regional level. We have issued the last publication, which the, the Andean policy of prevention, cancer prevention and control. We also have an overweight and obesity correspond to the needs proposed by the countries with regards to the health, uh, Andean health priority. We also have monthly newsletters. You can find this, all these in the web page. The ones in the lower portion of the slides are We've been publishing you know, periodically every two or three months. But as of 2020, we have monthly editions that are very interesting and that you can review in our web page. We also have at some point some newsletter in specific areas such as health and economy or health and epidemiology. In our institution, at this moment, we have the strengthening of the laboratory diagnosis for TB in the Americas, which issues documents that are completely, completely technical for the development of uh, projects. At this moment, I will ask Dira Salas, who will continue with the presentation. Thank you, Janet. We have an intersectorial work in health. So I'm going to briefly comment the participation of Foras Pondu on other institutions with publications where the regional contribution has been important. At this moment, we share two of those uh, issues to the pandemic, like global health and diplomacy or health and gender analysis. However, since our institution will also contribute to the collective buildup of knowledge, and we publish original scientific articles in scientific journals. Here, I'm sharing two of the most recent 
scientific journal publications, one regarding adolescents and the other with human resources in Pajo WHO journal and the other the journal of the medical school in Peru. In addition to all the publications that we have shared, our work also focuses leads us to have some other type of documents in our webinar, such as conventional documents. Week after week, we present the current situation of COVID-19 pandemic every Monday and Fridays in the technical group. And it is published on a weekly basis in, in, in IPEX. And it's an input for all the Andean region. And the webinars are also published, posted in ILIPED, providing evidence to the type of non-conventional documents for decision-making and for publication, updating the knowledge of the technical staff in human health. And as I was saying, part of the index in, is the creation of publications in scientific journals and this is part of the collection presented in the Peruvian literature of Peruvian science, lipids, and also feeds the LILACs. Because we as the Indian Health Organization are a cooperation center, and we have, and therefore we have access to post on a regular basis our publications And I also mentioned that the indexing it is of vital importance for the effort we do in spreading, sharing knowledge in health. So from we also publishing the biographical record, multimedia, and educational resources. For this type of situation, we follow some basic indexing standards such as ISBN. Uh, we can see a metadata as an example that allow us to collect really quickly the meta searchers for our institution and our citations. We also have part of the effort in Oras Conju of the um, license. So what type of license are we using? The uh, open access allows to copy, contribute, modify with no commercial means and contribution to the democratization of knowledge and information. I'm almost done. This is as an example of our world citations. It is clear that we as a cooperation center with the PE261 from PAHO, we have more than 200 index populations, but we we have an imp, a regional and world impact. So this is an important number to visualize in the representation we have in the region. Well, in a nutshell, as I mentioned, we have more than 234 new bibliographic records. We process ISBN code in our publications an international standard for world publications. We also generate evidence through our studies and diagnosis that Janet briefly shared. We also have periodical issues such as the Noticias Utandinas newsletter. And to conclude, what are the challenges we have as, as or as Conju? There are many, but part of spreading of the information and dissemination of information, indexation and creation of information, an essential part of our institution. Therefore, this in, in, in alliance of action, in addition to work for the right of health, mental health and infectious diseases, and to have a clear position, both at the level of research and communication and information and the generation of knowledge for the decision making. This is an important part of our institutions. And with this, I would like to conclude. I know Janet, you would like to share what we have the 
The audience can know what we have in our web page. Thank you. El micrófono cerrado, ya me disculpo. Sí, correcto. Un rápido, una, un rápido viaje. A quick a nuestro, journey a página web. in our web page. Our users can, can facilitate the search of documents. This is our web page and our publications. I'm showing them to you in an older fashion by policies, plans, and systematization for health analysis. However, in our web page, what we have policies or plans, you're going to find it in this initial opening menu. But all our publications are under a digital repository that it depends on. We started with the last one that we published with renal health. So you enter here and you will be able to see all our publications, which are in a PDF format, so you can download and also share. Any question, we're ready to answer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yadira. And we continue with our webinar. Now, we would like to welcome Magister Estela Roeder Carbo, who is a bachelor's degree in social communication and a master's degree in social anthropology from the Universidad Nacional Mayor de San Marcos. She has a specialization in qualitative methods from the specialty program for executive design. A diploma in internal communication from the University del Pacifico and a diploma in health communication from the University of Gran Rosario, Argentina. She has also worked as a university professor at the University of Lima since 2002. She has held position of high responsibility in different opportunities, such as an advisor of the ministerial office and general director of communication of the Ministry of Health. In addition to having been permanent secretary of the National Human Rights Commission, and Director of Communication of the Ministry of the Interior. She has been the Intersectoral Coordinator and Deputy Director of the Social Communication Secretariat of the Presidency of the Council of Ministers of Peru. Also, International Consultant of the World Bank, PAHO, WHO, UNICEF, USA, USA, AID, among others. Welcome, Magister Estela Roeder. You have the floor. Good morning to everyone. Let me share my presentation. First of all, I would like to thank for the invitation. I think it, today we have a challenge to talk about publishing without dying in the attempt. This title is not this very attractive and also challenging. I say it because at the moment that we are now in a fourth phase of this pandemic, the challenges for publishing and research have been different than others because we've had to reinvent and reshape our policies and how we investigate, how we publish, how we communicate, and not only for the researchers, but also in particular for the communicators. In this attempt, I would like to make a brief reflection as a communicator who has been working for many years in health communication, to mention what Alvin Offer told us many years ago, just two quotes that I think that are important. It is, in a synthesis, it's not only useful, it is crucial. He points out that the old ways of thinking, the old formula, dogmas, and ideologies, however esteemed or useful they may have been in the past, 
are no longer adequate to the fact. And the second quote demands completely new ideas and analogies, classifications, and concepts. As I mentioned, the challenge for researchers in health, for the social scientists who also research and who have to communicate and reach to their audience. Now we're talking about a phenomenon that we've seen during the pandemic. The pandemic has accelerated what some people call the digital revolution. I would say a digital revolution where the role of social media as a mean of communication and the source of information are extremely important today in our lives and that has led that the users have had to learn and to recognize we the face the infodemia that Dr. Maria del Carmen Calle mentioned, how to separate the truth from the false or the contents that are being tampered and generate misinformation. It's perhaps one of the most relevant aspects that we should highlight in this time of pandemia. All of this, of course, have led to this situation affects the notion and judgment of the public opinion because they highlight the doubts, fears, uncertainty, because finally they start generating different perceptions, different valuations of what happens in reality. And that concerns us because some positive, some negative trends can be generated. And in Latin America, there's been an interesting phenomenon has occurred. Of course, every country is following the pandemic. We're talking about with information 2022 have increased their digital capacity. You can see Peru, in the case of our country, has grown in 10 positions in the last 10 years. We, according to the UN, that measures the digital government development index, we move from 81 to 71 place. And we are located among the countries of most highest performance in digital world. Peru somehow is among the countries that has improved. And here you can find more information. And the other thing is that that reconfiguration and then the the top tech maturity in this the GTMI. Peru is placed in group A under the denomination of very high government tech leaders. And this is interesting, but not only for Peru, but for all the other countries of the, of the Andean region. These are challenges for information management on how we communicate with the audience in understanding this phenomena that uh, we are experiencing. So I will summarize in five key aspects when we talk about digital revolution. The pattern of digital consumption has changed because it is global. A Latin American visitor may spend almost 22 hours online. And following Mexico and Argentina, Peru is one of the countries with more use of social networks. We are located among the top 10 countries in the world. And we have Chile and Colombia with us. In all countries, the most relevant information media, as we've seen in the pandemic, have been the social networks and TV news. And the most used platform in all countries was the group chat, which we all use for academic, working, or to communicate on a, with the families in that on a daily basis. And you see an example of Peru, you can review this later. The in increase of headlines of cell phones and laptops has grown significantly. The digital growth, therefore, okay, we can see in the use and consumption, the web traffic in the social media, as you can see, Facebook 
despite that in some generations have been displaced by other digital platforms, still being important. And as you can see, the most visited sites in Peru, for example, have Google, YouTube, Facebook, and WhatsApp. So there is a real conversion in with respect to consumption that we need to consider because the audience are changing their consumption patterns. Another thing that we've been reviewing and how the governments help to the dissemination and communication in the digital world. And there are guidelines issued so that each country make progress in digital transformation. In the case of Peru, it is interesting to see how the elect electronic government has aligned. We have leadership that are defined for how to communicate to public entities in the digital world. And as you can see, there's a series of significant progress that in the case of a country, we can see. And this migration process of information is and has, has been and still is this filing information in web portals, in publications by the state institutions. It's also going through this process of migration. In some cases, has completed in the case of the Ministry of Health of Peru. For some years, we're working that migration process. I understand that it has been updated and we're trying to have information that is available for greater access. But as you can see, all effort to communicate, to inform, to reach these digital users have had to change the ways how institutions manage not only the information, how they communicate it, and that's a significant challenge. You're going to find a number of transactions done on May 13 in 2021, 433 million transactions in 2021, input and output of information by different users. And you're going to find a number of important aspects that are going to indicate how digit, the revolu digital revolution is also generating new habits a new culture of becoming informed. Here we have some interesting aspects of the digital transformation projects that have been performed of having a single digital platform for citizen orientation. The service says it's something sensible in public institutions, in the case of health, more important, and they have resulted in the conversion to different platforms who offer services to the population. And there's still room for improvement that because in some cases, through thanks to the pandemic, there's been some difficulty to access or offer some sensitive issues for the population, like obtaining a document, as we can see with a passport issue. So these trans digital transformation systems take their time and they are reconfiguring not only the platforms, but the culture of use and access of these ones. Here you're going to see how in the, we're working in the case of Peru. And today, entities as, as international, that's a IDB, have been promoting, giving access to public, uh, not only the executive branch, but also these institutions that are important at the territorial level. I'm talking about our regional governments and the local governments also to the extent that they have sensitive information for the citizens. So this is a process that's going to take time, taking some time, and I think the pandemic has accelerated this. We need to think in national policies for digital transformation, not only to have platform not only have the outputs and the inputs, but how in, in this tra digital transformation, the public institutions, the official institutions, especially those who work in the area of health, as in our case, what are those commitments 
in order to have a digital transformation, make that everything organized to provide a better service to the citizens and how to process the data. We know that the pandemic and infodemia and misinformation has generated today the official source demands us not only put it in value, but the access to that official source can help to clear doubts and generate scenarios of more trust and certainty. Therefore, it is important to have regulations, not only at the level of the countries, but in particular in the institutions. Today, the institutions start working with protocols, manuals, and the management of the information itself and even communication, because that's a way to start to put some order and to guide and align an institution searching for information efficiencies. We need to generate friendly contents. Today, the youth, when we see them, by using TikTok and Instagram, although that's a way how to communicate on a daily basis. It is still important for us to reflect on how to reach these population segments. That is an apparent cliche that they have light and quick consumption. So this is leaders have led should lead us to think that the information that's generated in the field of health is very sensitive for them for their life and to achieve well-being and the possibility of a healthy life. And that they can learn about it and have access to it. There we have a, a generational and cultural challenge because that implies to face the new information files, the ways how we work have changed and I just seen how the Oras Conjo is public, public and the publications have been able to be active during the pandemic and continue with research, which is so important. Today we see how we start working with multimedia consumptions and there are publications that start to use the QR and reach to explanation videos with QR codes with regards to the publications, and start with a narrative. Today we talk about the storytelling as one of the key elements that starting to be used in presentation. So it is important to think and analyze how that is going to reconfigure the use and consumption in the digital area, which is part of this reflection. And therefore, this transformation and revolution of data has to be seen. We, now we talk about this big data, how to deal with them, how to work with them in this process of adequation and digital transformation. Today, institutions at the beginning of the pandemic, as you may remember, many institutions didn't have uh, adequate digital platform. Everything was web. Based, they start generating alternatives such as the webinars, and we are in the edition 140, as Dr. Kaye mentioned. And this is commendable because they've been so constant in an area where this space has legitimized and people acknowledge and access. And these are the space and the alternatives that are important to sustain in a digitalized world with too much information. And the platforms need to be more dynamic. Everyone works for the digital ecosystems where this, precisely this publication that were previously generated, and I must say this through the Santa Cruz questions, the tension issue, and that's a good reason to analyze an order modification that implies with the conventional technical aspects and non-conventional aspects when we publish that needs to be transformed. The infodemia, 
why we need to have credible sources that change how we value information, not only because the application of resources or tools, but the immediate information accessibility has led us that people can have a quick access without a, a orientation or, or reflections on reliable information so that information can be valued in its real dimension. So we've seen that it has generated new audiences that demand new communication formats. And those communication formats tend to be lighter, a different structure of value and perception, especially for the younger generations. So that is part of what we've been going through this time. The analytical tools are more effective, especially to the extent that they are presented in real time. And we need to compatibilize and be have them appropriately transmitted. How to make the, the contents adjust to this dynamic situation where there's a, con a real consumption by the users. All of these are transformations. And here, in the case of the infodemia, I think that we need to consider when we see the author and the reader, we never see exactly the same thing in the publication or an information content of a book or a book. Because the idea is also to see to what extent the users have a average in terms of skills and capabilities. And of course, the young use other type of formats. In our university, we always see how they interpret the content extension and the analytical capacity that comes from how they manage social media. So from the academic, side has implied a very strong insight not only to start adapting but to complement and also start bringing these users to value the information and knowledge that are being generated in the academic side to implement no strategy and techniques by the challenge we have become a, and now we're going to see from consumption to production. We used to be a large consumption of messages, but now we generate messages. So there's a number of applications and platforms that are used today. Most of them you are using it. Perhaps we want to have more. And here you can see how this has changed the institution world how investigators and people who publish start see this critically, some adapt, some transform themselves, some are innovating. And that is part of this large digital revolution and transformation. And today, communicators think of what the new internet user is expecting. It's a number of studies in being performed that include what we call consumers, the prosumers, not only produce, but they also consume and there's contents of car security. So now they're using the new practice of how to use the styles, the connection to real cases, the drafting of the content, there's a diversity in cultural constructs, there's a tendency to look for change, traffic attraction, loyalty, and this is important because today we're talking how to manage followers. We didn't used to speak about that, but now we talk about manage followers and uh, is uh, included in the agenda of the institutions and force them to manage this new ecosystem and digital transformation demands from them and it's also going to give them the opportunity to decision making in real time and this requires an adaptation to the new use 
of resources and formats. So communication also has to face the infodemia. We need to define clear strategies. So this is part of a new value chain, new sources of value creation, increasing transparency, those who publish more or who look for contact and linking strategies with their different audience, prepare conditions for use. And we know that the institutions have different generations, both in producers as in consumers, and a vision for the future that makes this Manage, managing this production responds to these new demands and dynamics. So we need work new proposal for developers, generate content providers, and also see how today we start working more actively with the participations of the users. They want to be part of it. They want to have a stronger link with the institutions that generate information. We need to look for those strategies that allow us, that I feel that I'm part of it. And of course, some talk about competition. I would say competition, understanding in the good sense, but also to complement and welcome digital health. We need to think it from that logic. And to conclude, it is important. If we are in a system that intends to provide service to the society, how this we favor interconnection, interfunction, and that the technologies can dialogue. These are four aspects that I would like to conclude my presentation by recognizing the strong convergence process of discourse, content, and technology. This is very strong not only for communicators, but also for all the, everyone who are producers, users, and consumers of this digital bank. We need to change the content of the, the construction model to re the approach. And these new prosumers provide autonomous added values in the process, and they generate and consume contents and how we think of from our institution and our offer of contents and what they always tell us to construct intelligent and interconnected products where the user thinks that is creating value. This is a reflection that I do following the trends that today we have at the level of digital transformation that we will need to rethink and to get to continue investigating and publishing, acknowledging this reality that we see more and more every day. Thank you very much. We appreciate the intervention of Magister Estela Roeder. I share some ideas of the many and interesting ideas that she can share with us about the acceleration of the digital revolution brought by the pandemic and the networks converted in information center generated an infodemia affecting the judgment of public opinion and generating different values of the same topic. Some cases positive and in many positive, in many cases negative affecting health. We've seen that infodemia and misinformation took lives. So how important was this? She also talked about the creation of a national policy of digital transformation with the digital transformation of administrative process and generated friendly contents, but reliable contents. We need to give importance to reliability on information generated with evidence, the development of skills to understand the new digital world, implementation of new techniques and strategies and other of the challenges that Magister Reuter mentioned more transparent organization that want to publish more and generate a reliable link by working new proposals with differentiated strategies. A real challenge, dear Stella. Precisely regarding the last topic that you mentioned about 
the prosumers, which is a word that has started to become important, strength, a new word. And in this regard, we invite all of our participants to review our podcast publication, Prosumer Tool for Adolescents and Childhood for the Rights, issued by the Roundtable to Fight Against Poverty in Peru. Thank you, dear Magister Reder. And we invite you to remain in the room to continue with the webinar. At the end, we will have the Q&A. Next, to present scientific publication and the demands the challenge is not falling into the void, we welcome Dr. Eligia Sanchez Tovar, who is a sociologist with a PhD in sociology of work university at the Work University of Toulouse II, Le Mirel, France, Master in Opinion Studies on the Andalusian College of Doctors and Graduates in Political Science and Sociology in Granada, Spain, full professor on the Faculty of Economics and Social Sciences at the University of Carabobo, director editor of the journal Salud, Health of the Workers, accredited researcher of the Stimulus Program for Innovation and Research, of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, coordinator and professor of the master's degree in occupational health and hygiene of the work environment of the University of Carabobo. She has been a visiting professor of the master in projects and management of agro-industrial plants at the University of Cordoba in Spain, 29, 209 to 10, visiting professor of the doctoral program welfare and development of complex societies, Department of Sociology at the University of Granada, Spain, has an important production scientific articles in the area of occupational health and quality of life and responsible for several research projects in the area. The tutor of several PhD and master's degree thesis. Welcome, dear Dr. Gia Sanchez. You have the floor. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead, Dr. Sanchez. Thank you for the invitation. I am deeply grateful for the invitation and participation. This webinar will has a very important, interesting topic. In particular, we will talk about scientific populations. At this moment, I'm going to share with you a few ideas, brief ideas, with regards to scientific publication and its demands, considering that this is becoming a challenge for in investigators because of the fear of falling into the void. It generates a high interest and unrest in the academic area because the scientific publication is one of the most important activities that each developers must use. However, this topic demands a much deep approach because it covers different aspects has to do with drafting content, grammatic, of the manuscripts or the articles. So what, to, what I bring today is no more than a few ideas that with the purpose of not generating certainty is to generate uncertainty, with the purpose of pro provide more questions. And now I'm going to share my presentation. Give me a second here, please. Okay. 
So, I was saying that this is a large subject, but in this opportunity, just a brief information. It is important to start by saying that scientific publication has to do with scientific communities, has a protagonist, a researchers and young researchers that may start in that process of scientific writing. Young researchers start their first efforts in writing accompanied by an experienced researcher. Okay, now the screen is much better. My apologies. I was saying that the results of a scientific publication is a collective effort. It's not an individual product. It responds to an institutional framework and are usually developed in university spaces where researchers are the protagonists. So we can point out that the scientific product of days to establish and control guidelines, highly controlled, which make it possible for other researchers in a specific discipline can understand or reproduce the results obtained. We need, therefore, when we present the product of our investigation, reflects an effort to demonstrate the knowledge that has been generated. And of course, important contribution to the scientific community. We need to consider what Merton mentioned that I believe is extremely important, which indicates that the commitment of every researcher is to publish the results of the production of knowledge. And of course, it's discussion, exchange, and dissemination among the members of a science specialty or scientific community. It allows that the production of the investigations can be disseminated in the scientific area in general. However, we are still far from achieving this goal because a formal recording of research and its finding is still low because there is limited publication of scientific. It's of course, linked to several factors that have to do with the fear of publishing, with a lack of institutional support, has to do with the difficulties in the art of writing. So we need to develop institutional policies in order to overcome these barriers, which in most of universities when Mari and Mutt indicate that formal interior research and when the results are published in a scientific journal, she's telling us to disseminate what we are investigating. To what Merton proposes when he indicates it's not enough to do science, it must be written down. The difficulty in complying with this statement has to do in the things I mentioned before, among others. However, we know that the democratization of science, the dissemination of science is important through published articles that generate new investigations. It represents the basis for the development and increase of knowledge in specific areas. 
the most important purpose of emination is the democratization of science and technology and the open the open access to information has been an important engine to look, generate visibility of these outputs what it allows to be updated in terms of the progress of each discipline at this moment we are in a very interesting situation get to learn in real time the scientific progress generated in several parts of the world. This thanks to the open access. And of course, we indicate that when we use these cases of this information that is under open and free access, we are ac acknowledging what the investigator had been able to develop and make use of what they had been able to develop in different disciplines. Another aspect that we need to consider that is important take into consideration ethics must be present in every act of production and dissemination of, of scientific knowledge. In the act of production to avoid what we call the intellectual fraud, the generated by articles with false data, where Jeffrey Bill indicates in his book of how to write scientific that can come perhaps intentional or unintentional source of plagiarism or self-plagiarism. We see frequently today. It is clear that the free, the open access is an important tool that allows us to detect any type of situation that will be generating out in terms of integrity, because we can do an immediate that path. Now, with regards to dissemination, the dissemination of the knowledges, when we are publishing an article, we need to be careful of not falling and what we call the predatory magazines, a term generated by Jeffrey Bial, who found a large number of journals that were unreliable and that took advantage of one of the situations that researchers and academics face in many university institutions as the demand for product that academic productivity results in that investigators feel pressure to publish publish no matter why that need these predatory magazines used to offer the investigators the publication of their articles in an easy way, but they also demand a payment in currency, and that only affects the economy of the investigators, and affects what would be is where those products are published. So, to be able to publish or perish also becomes a sort of pressure that can also generate a dis distortion where institutions look for quantity and not quality. So the fear to perish 
academically speaking, is another factor that places investigators in a situation of risk. We say that this is a complex task of writing this article. Before at the beginning, I was indicating that I'm just going to give you a brief idea of this issue because a presentation of this topic will lead to several meetings. What it means to write a scientific article is to several steps. And in that process, several stages, and each stage could be a independent presentation or workshop that will allow those who are starting in this process to find their path that will not make them fall into the void. And so I shared the idea of the need of a literacy in scientific publications need. This means to provide to the university academic groups the necessary elements to have a culture that would allow them to have the sufficient tools and strengths to understand the process. And also evaluating it on paper manuscript. This is important because to the extent that a research knows what is exactly what is going to be evaluated, a perfect structuring of this document with more certain elements or more reliable in terms that it can be accepted. In the journal. Literacy is also related to the knowledge of the basic structure of the article, such as it was established by the American National Standards Institute. Every scientific article must follow the IMRND as introduction, methods, results, and discussion. For each one of these aspects, we need to find the elements that will guide the future article writer. Each of these aspects leads to an effort and a system at the same time, which requires time, dedication, in this opportunity, I'm going to talk in particular to my experience in the journal Salud de los Trabajadores to indicate what we have found in our experience. I mentioned at the beginning, these are just brief ideas. This is not a big presentation on this topic, and therefore, I will show you what we have found. I'm going to show some aspect that we found in some of the manuscripts in the review process. The journal went with an internal review by the editorial committee. To this document, we do a check, and then we establish if the article complies with the minimal requirements to be submitted to the arbit arbitrary arbitrage process. Then we look in this search. We do the, look at the formal aspects and if the manuscript is applied to the editorial line of our journal. This initial information is reported to the authors to do the necessary changes. So from there on, when the document is sent back, we start the process. This is where we, a referee is appointed for this document. 
So, we are looking to some efficiency that we have identified in those stage in of document review that has to do with one of the fighting done by Rodriguez Gonzalez Mendez and La Piedra Pacific Journal of Health. They found the frequent deficiencies in the formal and methodological characteristics. And in our case, we found this type of deficiency. I found that type of deficiency, but in more frequent cases in terms of the formal and methodological aspects with the abstract introduction, development, conclusion, and reference. With regards to the drafting, the writing and spelling, in a few cases we think that we have detected deficiencies. The most important deficiency that we identify in the manuscript follow the incorrect ideas or lack of con repetitions, disconnected ideas and paragraphs, among others, which reveals that the manuscript should have been reviewed in more detail before sending it to our office. We say that when an investigator decide, decides to publish results of an investigation, it is important to consider certain aspects of that product of scientific research, to consider that product is relevant, that has some type of original generation of knowledge that has verifiable data, that have an updated and relevant background information that provides support, the state of the art of the production of those results. And of course, we'll have potential stakeholder in that scientific area. These are very important elements in order to consider that that product of the investigator shown can be translated into a scientific For that reason, from our experience, we consider that every investigator who wants to publish must consider certain aspects when they write a scientific adequate language to the audience to which is directed has to consider that that document has to be original that contributes with new aspects in its community about this topic you must be careful that the references that are being used in support are updated and of course are adequate to what the topic they are considering. Now, in terms of the title, the investigator has to be careful that this really reflects what the document has and that it is attractive for the reader. In terms of the abstract, we need to be very careful that this collects in a synthetic manner the aspects related to the goal, the material and methods and results and discussion. In addition to the keywords, the keywords are very important elements because from the keywords, the document can be located in the search engines. And also it has to be extremely careful with regards to the structure of the text respecting the IMR and D that has been used universally in specific articles is a necessary scheme 
and needs to be followed. Also, has to be careful that there are no inconsistencies in the text with the information provided, with the data being presented in the tables or the number. Therefore, it should, should get rid of unnecessary data and make sure that this follows the standards of the journal where they have submitted the article. Also, attention to other aspects. We know that it's not easy for the to make a, a production. It's not easy because it is extremely difficult to find any deficiencies and therefore needs to contact other colleagues to read the document and identify any incoherences or weaknesses in that document. For example, that the goal is clearly specified, that the comprehensive description of the design and its relevance to the objectives, no incoherences, and everything that has to do with the description of the scope of the study is so that the population is clearly defined and of course it is clear the inclusion criteria are adequately indicated and the mechanisms to collect the sample. On the other hand, you should pay attention to the data collection instruments and this needs to be understandable in terms that if the investigator is, a use, is using a validated instrument, the person that reads the article can find that instrument and verify the use of that instrument. Also, pay attention to the fact of the data collection instruments and analysis strategies. It must specify what is the analysis strategy that's in use. In terms of the discussion and interpretation and conclusions, that aspect need to be related with the investigator data. So, we should make sure that in the conclusions, we should respond to the objective proposed. Therefore, the conclusions cannot be referred to other issues that are not related to the investigations. They should also clearly present what is the position of the author with regard to that topic as a Research researcher, researcher in terms of this problem, what is my clear position that is exposed in express in that document. In addition, there are other aspects that need to be considered with regards to the references. In, there are certain tools that are useful for the citations and references. However, it is important to make a prior review of this. We need to pay attention. All citation must have the reference data and every reference should be presented adequately as the journal standards require data. 
I don't think I should have to also say that the grammar, grammar and syntax are also extremely important because in some occasions we require the help of other people. We need to avoid unnecessary rhetoric. We are drafting. We need to be careful that when we build sentences, these are not difficult to understand and the paragraphs are constructed and coordinated with others. So we can follow a continuity between them. And of course, we need to consider that conclusions will be substantiated in what we have in our document. Well, this is just to wake up the wish of the audience to look and go in more depth. These are just a very simple idea that I am presenting today. As final thoughts, I would like to add, it is important to take into account that each scientific journal has its own standards or guidelines to which manuscripts must adhere. We need to find out what are the standards for the journals or our manuscript can be adjusted to those standards. Those standards or guidelines are a valuable guide for the structuring of the document that can come to be accepted by the journal. In that regard, we must respect those guidelines. And by selecting the journal, which is an important element to consider, we need to look at the editorial line. It will guide me if the that I am treat, having in my document is someone that follows that editorial line. Otherwise, from the start, this document may be rejected. So the preparation of scientific article, it is clear that is a highly demanding task and must follow and ethical principles that we mentioned before. I have to do the making sure that our document that has already been published or has portions that are not mine or are mine but has been published in another document. In that regard, we need to pay attention to that information. There have been a, a time when the authors of the articles feel disappointed or offended because the document was not accepted in the journal. It's important to point out that an unacceptance of an article should not be considered the end of the fall, not be considered falling into the void or the loss of the work that we've done. On the contrary, this the, the documents, when it comes back with all the review that the reviewers have done, allow the author to take each one of those observations and have the opportunity to improve the document. Because they've been able to identify in the document some limitations that the author may correct in order to generate a new document that's more potent document that has the opportunity of being published. And that has the strength of being reviewed by specialists in that area that made the number of observations and suggestions that have been corrected. 
which represents in an learning experience. That is why we say that the arbit this arbitrage should be considered as a thing that needs to be used to take advantage. Some of the reference consulted for you, so you can if you have any doubts following my presentation, it's interesting when we leave doubts because that forces the audience to look and feel those things that we need, that we feel that we don't know. So thank you for being here. And I leave you this thought from Oppenheimer that I think is extremely a scientist has the liberty to propose any issue, any doubt, and correct mistake. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sanchez. Thank you. We thanks for your intervention of our professional who share information starting with that phrase it's not Merton's mention that he indicated that Dr. Calles we not have to write it we need to publish it so we we'll mentioned the importance of democratization of science and technology and one of the aspects that she highlighted is the ethics that should be present in every production and uh, dissemination of scientific uh, production and to avoid the fraud. Something so important for the young person who are following us and that are participate in this webinar that you can see in our Facebook and YouTube channels a very enrichment experience of having these interventions where they provide guidelines to publish, not falling into the void, as the title of this presentation indicated. We need to have literacy in scientific publications. Perhaps technology is shortened in words. We are consider it as a rule to shorten and abbreviate in words and to make science requires literacy, especially when you want to publish. Non-acceptance of an article, as she mentioned at the end, should not be considered at the end of the possibility of writing, but to encourage the, that this review may open other paths of searching a, a publication and result in a teacher. Thank you, Dr. Sanchez, for the, your intervention. And now we invite you to stay in the room. After an active break, we will have the Q&A session. We like to greet our participants who are connecting from Bolivia, Chile, Colombia, Cuba, Ecuador, Mexico, Paraguay, Peru, and Venezuela, of the Ministry of Health of the Andean region. And in addition, from Peru, we have the CDMT of the El Salvador, the Regional Office of Lima Sur, CMI John Paul II in the El Salvador, Iresa Callao, and Mino Valizal Hospital in Lima, in the Carabobo University of Venezuela. Greetings to all. And we invite those of you who haven't indicated in the chat their origin. We encourage them to write so we can greet you in this portion of the webinar. After these moments of learning, it is essential to take some space to relax and start a mini physical exercise session while teleworking or as Kong who encourages the well-being of those who join us in this virtual session. And in the next few minutes, we will exercise with an active pose to stay healthy, combat stress, reduce work fatigue, 
and keep muscle flexible and healthy. Please go ahead with the active pose. There will be no interpretation during the active pose. Estamos teniendo algunos inconvenientes logísticos. Eh, estimado Rob, por favor, nos indicas el inicio. Un momentito, por favor. Muchas gracias. Recordar que estamos en el webinar 140. This desde... is our webinar 140 since 2020. Since the pandemic started, and we had to deal with no, rea no reality, normality. We always invite you to comply with your vaccination in your countries. Buenos días, buenas tardes, desde donde quiera que te encuentres en cualquier parte del mundo. Desde el Organismo Andino de Salud, Convenio Hipólito Unanue, estamos muy felices de recibirlos en esta actividad saludable. Hoy bienvenidos a liberar las tensiones acumuladas en la espalda y en los hombros y solamente utilizaremos nuestras sillas. ¿Y qué vamos a arrancar calentando de una vez? Quiero que te imagines en una piscina, en una piscina y que estás nadando hacia el frente, nadie hacia el frente, perfecto, el que no nade se hunde, perfecto, ánimo, energía, eso es, vamos calentando los brazos, los hombros para liberar las tensiones de la espalda, bueno sabe que nadie hacia atrás, nadie hacia atrás, vamos energía positiva, brazos amplios, grandes, generosos, excelente, bueno y el que se descoordine gasta algo, con el brazo derecho nado al frente, con el izquierdo nado hacia atrás, caliénteme los brazos, perfecto, ¿Cómo están? En una piscina en Bolivia, en Chile, en Colombia, en Ecuador, en Perú, en Venezuela. Excelente, liberando estrés, cambie, cambie. Entonces, brazo contrario adelante, izquierdo adelante, derecho hacia atrás. Si se puede, domínelo, caliente la espalda, los brazos, los hombros. Muy bien, y descanso, muy bien. Segundo ejercicio rápido de calentamiento. Quiero que nos aprendamos dos posiciones. Primera posición, manos a la cintura, llevas atrás, los codos, pecho adelante. Muy bien, mira hacia arriba, muy bien. Pelvis hacia atrás, perfecto. Estira un poquito hacia el frente. Posición 2, justamente la contraria. Bajas la mirada, brazos adelante, pecho hacia adentro, espalda flexionada. Y vamos a llevar la cadera, la pelvis hacia adelante, miro hacia abajo. Esa va a ser la posición número 2. Cambio, mira arriba, perfecto, cambio abajo, cambio arriba, perfecto, cambio abajo y cambie periódicamente. Mover la columna vertebral es algo 100% saludable para aliviar tensiones en la espalda, perfecto. Tres más de esos, dos más de esos, último. Y descanse, muy bien, excelente, ya hay calorcito, así que vamos a hacer dos, tres posturas para soltar tensiones de la espalda. La primera, quiero que te ubiques al lado de tu silla, al ladito de tu silla, separa las piernas, muy bien. Vas a apoyar la mano más cerca de la silla, en ella, la otra mano, bien arriba, arriba, pégala a las orejas, muy bien, cuando las tengas allí, mira, esa mano va a ir a buscar el otro extremo de la silla, va, 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 búsquelo, 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 agarre ese extremo de la silla, sonría, respire y vas a sentir la tensión, la liberación en la espalda, parte lateral, zona lumbar, eso es, respire, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 
uno, regreso, 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 regreso y me estiro. ¡Wow! Como que se siente, perfecto. Pero vamos a hacer el contrario, entonces me voy a ubicar al otro lado de mi silla. Recuerda que el brazo más cercano lo apoyo en la silla, separo las piernas, muy bien. Brazo contrario arriba, péguelo a la oreja y voy al lado, voy al lado, voy al lado. Trate de apoyar esta otra mano en la silla, si sí se puede. Maneja la respiración profunda, continua, desde casa, desde la oficina, desde donde te encuentres puedes hacer estos ejercicios que traemos desde el organismo andino de salud con Benny Porito una nueva. Vamos, vamos, vamos. Regreso, regreso, regreso. Me estiro, me estiro, me estiro. Perfecto, excelente. ¿Cómo vamos hasta aquí? ¿Bien o no? Excelente. Vamos a darle la espalda a nuestra silla y vamos a poner nuestras manos, vamos a apoyar las manos en la silla, vamos a llevar el pecho adelante, mirada hacia arriba, estiro, estiro, estiro y empiezo a liberar ese cansancio físico, mental, emocional, todo lo que nos afecta a nuestra vida a través de la actividad física, los estiramientos, el Salir de la rutina, tomo aire, exhalo y descanso, hombros adelante, hombros adelante, crocanticos, crujientes, muy bien, excelente. Siguiente postura, súper recomendado para las tensiones de la espalda, así que acompaño. Vamos a apoyar las dos manos, dos manos en nuestro, nuestro asiento, muy bien, separo las piernas, quiero que estiren las piernas y mira, llevas la silla hacia adelante, o tu cadera hacia atrás, y vamos a empezar a bajar, baje, 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 cadera hacia atrás, apoyo, muy bien, y voy a tratar de alinear mi espalda con el espaldar de la silla, voy a sentir ese estiramiento, mire, desde las piernas, zona lumbar, espalda, brazos, estírese, y ahí nos vamos a quedar 20 segunditos, así que respire, eso es, energía positiva, 10, 9, 8, 7, si se puede, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, tomo aire, 1 y muy despacio, muy despacio, me regreso, 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 me regreso. y ay, como que se va sintiendo la distensión en la espalda, eso es, desde el horas como y trayendo estos ejercicios para sentirnos bien, bueno vamos a repetir ese ejercicio y le vamos a hacer una variante, ¿listo? Bueno, apoya las manos en tu silla, llevas al frente, al frente, al frente, al frente, te apoyas, te estiras, te estiras, te estiras, perfecto, cuando estés allí, quiero que subas un brazo, mire, y vas a mirar ese brazo, arriba, 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 se estira, mi otra mano está bien apoyada en el asiento, manejo la respiración, profunda, continua, regreso y vamos a ir al lado contrario, entonces subes brazo contrario, arriba, te estiras, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, apoya las dos manos, perfecto, regresas en cámara lenta, regresas en cámara lenta, regreso, 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 ay, descansa, se vale despeinarse, se vale despeinarse, se vale toda la pausa activa del día de hoy, desde Loras Como estamos muy felices de traerles estas pausas activas diferentes, divertidas, dinámicas y que favorezcan nuestro estado de salud. Así que los animamos a seguirlas realizando. Un abrazo fraternal, los queremos mucho. Chao, chao. Muchas gracias. Thank you. I hope we you hope you've been able to go and get coffee or do the exercises. After this small active video and we have oxygenated our lungs, we're going to start a dialogue based on the questions asked by the audience. I invite the speakers for the development of this section. We will start in the order of presentation for Magister 
rather, what can we do to reach the segment of the population who don't have access to digital networks? I think that there are two central issues here. We have the policies of electronic and there's been a progress in the public uh, and government spaces, but in terms, for example, to put it in the case of education, it's been a challenge in the pandemic learning at home that was implemented and opened a very complicated situation. We have seen the effort made for parents can facilitate the cell phones to their children. In Peru, we had an average of 37 million or 33 to 37 million cell phones. People who had phones, cell phones in Peru after the pandemic, this is, it grew over 46 million. So this means that many children in the school age in terms of the use and access of cell phones decreased. I mean, age before the pandemic was 12 years, but now it's seven. So this is telling us that there is a demand and an effort in the families to make their children be connected to the learning at home. It was difficult and there we need to make efforts, not only in access to technology, but also in the effort that requires developing the teaching skills for the teachers and the tools. So the challenge of this digital policy in terms of education in itself has been a very strong effort that is still in agenda, still pending. So I think that the effort as public policies, as in the case of the electronic government and the access to services, and that the population may have. And in this pandemic, has, we've seen a positive effect in terms of developing technology and access, but there is still a gap, especially in the rural areas. So we need to continue with the efforts. I consider that the pandemic has given us some thrust drive and open a new window to develop in technological digital access, the gap is still large. So I think that this is something pending and a challenge for the institutions. And I think that the academic and research areas have also not only investigated, but also see how they can coordinate with this reality, what are the proposals and solutions that in practical terms people can have better access and a right to an open digital communication and the fact that the new generation can have equal access and can we overcome these voids that still exist in our country. Those, I would say that's the effort that needs to be done. Thank you so much, Dr. Sanchez. Are there significant experience in promoting research in, in the health facilities in the region, specifically speaking about Venezuela. You need to activate your microphone. Thank you. My apologies. Well, in this regard, I think the possibility of promoting investigators in health facilities is directly related to the development of postgraduate courses, the coordination with universities and health facilities. At least in Venezuela, the clinical postgraduates are carried out in health facilities. And the research generating those postgraduate courses are referred to those health centers. So there is a necessary partnership, very important, for the development of research from the spaces of health together with the universities. So the postgraduate students have an important role. 
So let's say that in Venezuela, that's how we do is in BAM. In Venezuela, the University of Carabobo, our clinical postgraduate students in trauma, anesthesiology, are done in hospital. Okay? And the research they do by these postgraduate students is generated in those health. Thank you. Very interesting. Thank you so much. For Magister Rueder, given that we have consumers and users, can they promote digital health in their networks? How can we potentiate that or promote that effort? Your microphone. We have important challenges here. The new generations, I would say, have an information demand and the investigation on the needs of information on different topics. For example, in the pandemic, something that was a recurrent theme in the studies I've been able to look is mental health. For example, I remember as it's been significant in this demand, but it is also true that although Peru may have been able to expand and improve digital access, my concern is that there are still gaps. We cannot talk of equity in terms of digital access on one hand, and on the other hand, it is important that the academic the universities and the investigators in, in face of the public policies and these existing platforms, how can they contribute in shortening the gap and improve the access? There's a lot to be done. I have no doubt that digital communication in the communication schools is even a specialty, but we also need to work to find out what's happening in a country like ours, what the pandemic has left us lessons and opportunities, but there's still a lot of challenges. There's a need for dialogue in order to generate new policies of transformation that are pending so that culture can become a reality and that digitalization in terms of access to equipment that is increasing and also consumption is also reflected with adequate information access and handling of information and real truth information. The digital citizenship is a challenge for all of us to the extent that people not only produce and consume, but also what the ethical sense, their rights and duties as a digital citizen. That is part that I understand as a culture that needs to be transforming, but, and, but also providing access to the largest number of people and citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Magister Rueda. Thank you. For Dr. Sanchez. What are the necessary strategies to promote research from the pre-graduate level with the development of thesis? This question is very close to me because in the pre as a pre-graduate, I teach for research methods. And in that course, where you sensitize students for research. And I developed a interesting project with my students where I wanted to know if the way we were doing it was having an in them because we prepare them to draft their research project that are going to translate in their thesis. And an interesting element that emerged from that project is we will see what gives me information of what needs to be done is that our students should coordinate with the research projects developed by their teachers. So we need to connect the pre-graduate students 
with the research activities that is carried out in the institute, connecting them with the research unit, with the research centers and the research institute. Why? Students indicated that in many cases, they didn't know what their teachers were doing in terms of research. So it was very difficult for them to see as investigators. But they become investigators when they develop their research project in order to obtain their degree, to conclude with the degree work. So the question is, what needs to be done? Well, we need to coordinate the students with the research activities, not stay with just the teaching, but we need to involve the students in certain projects that will be made them participate in that activity so they can see how this process is not that common. It is a process that is articulated with facts and disciplines. One of the issues that I was mentioning is that they, many times they couldn't see how the degree effort will allow them to go in depth, more depth in one of the aspects of the disciplines in which they're being trained. And because they didn't see the relationship between the discipline and the investigator, for example, in the social economic sciences faculty, there the students deal with topics from the world of economy. So there's a need for them to connect with that project that the professors are developing. So they can see in this experience the possibility of developing their own topic for research. We cannot isolate the students, leave them alone as just students in the classroom to be taught. The undergraduates should be involved in the research process carried out in school faculty where they're studying. That is the element. And in addition, it is important that the courses that have to do with research, those courses I've lost the image and audio. The connection. Doctora Sanchez, are you there? Doctora Sanchez, can you hear us? Let's hope she can reconnect. We thank for her answer to this interesting question. It's fully valid in current times. We consider that the undergraduate thesis are so important in involving the students in scientific activities right from the start. We would like to thank our two speakers. Unfortunately, because of time, we're not going to be able to complete all the questions. But those questions will feed our next discussion. I'm sure we're going to talk about this again. We also thank to all the members of the Horas Conju. And to close this space, I will ask the speakers that in one minute, give us a final message in the order of the intervention. Estela, you go first. 
Thank you very much. I think that the challenges are there. Research, the young people, the scientific and health have to find each other to see in this transformation a role, a function. We need to continue building alternatives and this is a great opportunity. We've been hit hard by the pandemic, but it also left us important lessons from the side of research and investigation in sensitive aspect has allowed us to provide answers that allow us to work this situation better. I would like to congratulate your organization. You are an example. And I am pleased to see that the young professionals can have a reference of the work you do. Thank you so much. Thank you, Magister Roeder. Dr. Sanchez, she lost connection. We thank her to our two excellent speakers, Magister Roeder and Dr. Sanchez. We thank you for your participation. And to all of you who participate in this activity, if possible, through the commitment with the Indian Latin American Integration. Dr. Carmen Calle will close this webinar on behalf of the Indian Health Organization, the Polito Inano Agreement. Go ahead, Dr. Calle. Well, thank you so much. It's been an excellent webinar because we've had two situations. We're talking about managing knowledge and we've spoken about research and its characteristics that a good invest research has to be done we have spoken from ethics to the good relationships i think it's been a very good presentation by dr sanchez and we also spoken that in order to promote our students or our young people re investigate because they need to investigate well tell me how i do it let me do it and I'll do it. Because you learn things by doing them. And also, Stella's position of the digital transformation, of how necessary this is at every level. We need to take advantage and use the new existing tools. But we should not forget that when we are talking about apps, we're talking about access, technology, and learning gaps. As she clearly mentioned, when the digital illiteracy, we need digital literacy. We are using internet as a social determinant, but it's not only the access to internet, it's to have the instruments, the knowledge, and the internet. There are several things that we need when we talk about digital gap, but all of these it can be summarized in knowledge management. At the end of the day, the Indian Health Organization is to put at everyone's reach the updated and ver verified and scientific information they joke with me because I am called the evidence woman, but that's the truth. An institution that is acknowledged as a reference in health in the Andean region cannot say something that is not based on evidence. So in that regard, we try to be as exact. It is for me a real honor. It's been extremely well good webinar because it has made us reflect that we need to move ahead and we need to do more and we still have a long way to go but we are contributing and that is what makes the Andean Health Organization the Policy and Agreement continues working in favor of the health and well-being of the more than 168 million people who live in our country. A big virtual hug, Estela. Thank you very much for your presence. Special greeting to Ligia Sanchez. Excellent presentation. And what we're thinking is 
we are only staying webinar, so perhaps we are discussing with you to see what else can we do in the coming year. Something to continue contributing to digital literacy. We would like to share with you that we have 32 digital journalists that we have trained. And you know, Stella, I always consider the young and the adolescent that we know they're going to be important channels for their health. But we're also working strongly with research, and we will discuss with Dr. Sanchez with the possibility of a course for investigation. Because these countries, there's a lot of that being done. I have discovered in these two and a half years that the six countries have many things to share. So I think that from the Indian Health, we need to promote that. That all the research and the knowledge that's generated is at the reach of everyone with the ultimate goal of making the best decisions for the populations of our countries. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Janet, Yadira, and congratulations to all the group of the Indian Health Organization. I would like publicly thank to all the staff of the Indian Health Organization that without them, it would not be possible to reach our webinar number 140. We are proud of this inter, continuous interlearning that we offer. So thank you very much to everyone. And don't forget to join our next webinar on the 29th of September. We're going to talk about an update on monovalent and bivalent vaccines against COVID, and also the vaccines in the small. There we have Dr. Sanchez. She was able to join again. Sometimes we have a problem. Wait for her for a while. Dr. Sanchez, your final message, please. I don't think she has been able to join us. Well, a big hug for Dr. Sanchez. Thank you so much. We'll be in contact with you. Stella, see you next Thursday in the next webinar. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Yadira. Thank you, Milagrito, Gloria, Rob, Marisela, and to all the Andean health organizations.